going to come up a lot, especially in this stage. So uh, the one thing we're going to introduce are issues and um, things that the typesetter is specifically looking for. You know, the typesetter is now not concerned about whether or not, you know, this is this is blue or this is red or the margins are correct, because all that should be taken care of by our designer already. All those uh, conventions have been established and the typesetter is responsible for executing them with the full text. So a couple terms we're gonna get into. Um, and I've kind of, this won't be in your file. I've introduced these errors so that I can show you what the typesetter is gonna be looking for. So the first thing uh, is a stack. And there's two different kinds of stacks. This relates to our internal typesetting guidelines. But here you can see two instances of the same word on top of each other. Now, this could cause some readability issues. You know, your reader is going down the line and then hits the same word. Are they gonna get lost a little bit? Are they going to stumble? Uh, is it going to, um, you know, reduce the readability of the text? These are things that the type is gonna look for. There's actually two types of stacks here. Um, so I don't know if anyone wants to take a, take a guess as to what the second type of stack is because we see one that's pretty easy to spot, two whole words over each other. There's actually one over here as well. There's two words, so two instances of we can stacked on top of each other. But there's a separate type of, the of, of stack that the type that it looks for. And it's in this same zone right here on the left-hand side. And it's just gonna, at any time that's the same instance. Yeah, that's right, Marcia. T, 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 yeah. So we see a T stack here in addition to a traveled stack. Now what the typesetter is going to do is they could solve these errors in a couple different ways. Uh, you know, they could maybe try to like introduce another, um, have a little stack over here. You know, they could try to re-break the text in a certain way. Uh, they could do that with things like uh, soft returns. They could maybe try to adjust the, what's referred to as the tracking, the letter spacing. Um, in order to pull text in different ways. And that's a, that's one thing they're going to look for. We're going to look for stacks in typesetting. Uh, we're going to look for um, widows. And a uh, widow is a, a word or short last line of a paragraph by itself. So here's another example of something that they might find, some issue that they could find here. We have a, you know, this word is ending way too short, looks weird, kind of strange. Uh, typically, we wanted to extend past the first uh, letter in the next paragraph after it. So again, they could do a couple different things. They could decide to maybe pull this text a little bit tighter and see if they can break it up. They could try to you know, push the text out a little bit and maybe move um, something like is back up or re-break it in some way. So now, in both of these instances, we talked about how the typesetter can push or pull the tightness of the text in order to solve these problems. But then we get into another issue down here where this text is just way, way, way too tight. You know, you can see that even sometimes the letters are like crashing into each other. If I zoom out, you can see text here just looks a lot denser. It's a little strange. Um, uh, so that's something that could happen because of how text is just naturally breaking. Uh, InDesign is doing a lot of different adjustments to sort of balance the text, but every once in a while, you could end up with something that's too loose or too tight like this, or too loose like that. So they're gonna be looking for any lines that sort of follow these parameters. Uh, I'm doing it intentionally so that you can see kind of what it, what it looks like, but uh, those are things that the typesetter is going to adjust. And now similarly, maybe the typesetter accidentally or quasi-intentionally introduced things like this in trying to solve other things like uh, like uh, stacks or bad breaks. And this is something that we look out for uh, eventually in types of QC when we're just scrolling through the book, looking at line endings, looking at the text, because this is um, pretty gross, pretty gross, definitely doesn't match up consistently with everything else in terms of the text density. So we wanna make sure to catch stuff like that. Um, another thing they're gonna be looking out for is a bad break. So I have two introduced right here. One I think is pretty apparent and the other one not quite so apparent. Um, 
So bad break, a large number of different inappropriate hyphenations or, uh, you know, breaking from one line to another that, you know, causes bad things. You know, like if you were to break an ellipsis after the first period or something like that, it would look pretty strange, look pretty weird. Um, real quick, can anybody point out the bad break in this paragraph on screen here? There's actually, there's actually two of them, but I feel like one is, yeah. Yeah, that's the clear one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we definitely want to keep these together. We don't want to, we don't want to break up, you know, an initial like that. And the second one I'll just point out is this right here, separating out something that should be whole, separating 10 and percent or 50 AD um, or Mr. Smith. We don't want to break those things across lines. So these are a lot of things that the typesetter is going to be looking for after they float in the text and started doing, you know, their different break things. So it, it is a very, very granular stage here. It's, it's a lot of sort of little small things and just literally going from page to page and ensuring that the text is as readable as possible. And these are all things that can really cause the reader to stumble as they're going through the book. Thankfully, there's a couple of things that are built in. So uh, I'm gonna step back to the types that are written differently. So apparently differently spacing text and say, yeah, yeah, it's not, so Karen's question is, does the typesetter run the risk of, um, and let me know if I'm understanding it, of causing text to look different and adjusting? Yes, definitely. So that could be something here that, for example, maybe I'm, I'm the typesetter and I want to try to keep 10 and percent together, and maybe your typesetter makes a bad decision and they just keep reducing the space until it works, and they're like, okay, good, that looks great. But you can see this line and this line are very different in terms of their text density. So that would get some, that would get caught in typeset QC. Not that I'm aware of. The question is, is there a readability software? Our, ours is a very human process and it's just the types that are sort of looking through. Now we do have internal guidelines that are built in, um, such as the typesetters are sort of instructed um, to only adjust text a certain degree. There's a tool here uh, which is not uh, your tracking. So our typical internal guideline is plus or minus 15. So if the typesetter is adjusting things this here, I don't know if you can see it's a negative 22 in terms of its tracking. Like that's the typesetter breaking the rules to try to make something happen. Um, so if I were typesetting this and I hit negative 14 and I'm like, well, that doesn't really work. So I have to figure out another strategy to keep these things together. And for now, I'm just gonna kind of sweep anything and set this back. There's a, a nice handy option. You can always choose to what's called clear override. So any of those adjustments that I made, like text density changes, things like that, that's considered an override because it doesn't follow the um, guidelines. So, but I can always choose to clear override and just kind of reset text according to the definitions there. Okay. Um, so that's just a couple of examples of what the typeset is going to be looking for in the books as they're going through. For now, I want to take a step back and just go through the procedure as we describe it in typesetting. So I'm going to scroll all the way up to page one here. And we're going to talk about a couple of different issues. We're going to talk about how the scribe tools helps the typesetter by automating a lot of things that they have to look for and how it affects the basic process. So we've completed step one already. Step one is flowing the IDTT into our template. And now um, the process as I've defined it, and it should be listed in that typesetting module. I'm just going to kind of go through the first things that we want to do are take care of any normal, um, any, any um, issues that the typesetter might look for later. One of those is including um, bad breaks and um, URLs. So after I were to flow in the IDTT. I'm going to run this tool uh, under typesetting adjustments and it's called apply breaking rules. So for those of you who have the scribe tools installed under typesetting adjustments, you'll see this apply breaking rules thing. We always try to do this very early in the process. Essentially what it does is it looks for pairs of text that could be 10 and percent or Mr. and Smith and it changes the space in the middle of the word, like a normal hit your space bar space, to what's called a non-breaking space. 
uh, and essentially what a non-breaking space is. It means that it can't sort of like go from one line to another. Those two pairs have to stick together. And it handles a lot of stuff that the typesetter would normally look for. Things that used to be part of these manual checks is now handled automatically by this tool. So it's very nice your typesetter can sort of run this uh, already. And it would just go to, if I were to find that 10% that I put in, if I can find it. I'll zoom in real close. You can see it did a couple of things here. If you have, um, I think it's view, let me type the hidden text. Yeah. So if you're not seeing these little dots here, these little blue characters, you can turn them on by going to type and it should say like show hidden characters. Mine says hide because it's already turned on. And what we're looking at comparing is this little dot and this blue car character. So this little blue dot just means a regular space. This is a non-breaking space. But if you recall from before, that 10 was over here and percent was over here. When we replace, uh, when we run that tool, it replaced it with a non-breaking space. So now it has to stick together. Same thing up here for the first two initials and then Dubois. So there's a lot of built-in searches that it looks for and it tries to handle things for you as much as you can. Um, looks like it doesn't catch a three, uh, three letter initial, but most two letter initials like I am pay or things like that would get caught. So it handles a lot of things automatically that used to be a manual thing. So it does a lot of work for the typesetter. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is another scribe tool it's under URLs and linking, and it's called Rebreak URL. So I don't know if you're familiar with um, bibliographies or notes or having uh, URLs in your um, in your notes, but one thing you don't want to do is like hyphenate a URL or break a URL in a bad spot that's going to make the reader think that like, okay, I want to enter this letter in and I put a hyphen in because it looks normal, but all of a sudden the URL doesn't work because it has to be those specific characters. So this is going to run a tool to break URLs at certain spots, insert these characters that say, hey, only break it here and don't hyphenate it. Additionally, it's going to apply a character style that would be very important for the ebook phase. Uh, we have a character style called URL, and basically that turns any text tagged with URL to an actual live link in the ebook process. So, similar to how we want to maintain the structure from composition in thinking forward to the uh, ebook stuff, we're also introducing some functions later on. So now we have this tool that's going to help us turn these links into um, live links automatically in your HTML or EPUB file. Um, so rather than you going through and tagging each one specifically, if you have a, a bibliography and there's a ton of notes in there and a ton of um, URLs in them, that'll handle it automatically for you rather than going through and granularly tagging things like that. And we run that as well. So essentially what we're doing here is we're trying to limit the amount of manual work that we need to do later on. I've, I've reduced the things that I, as a typesetter, have to check for uh, greatly. I don't really concern myself with looking for those breaks or things like that. You're aware of them, but, but most of them are going to be handled with these, with these automatic additions of things like not breaking spaces that happen throughout. Um, so questions about that so far. You know, we looked at common errors that we might find in typesetting. We looked at a couple tools to um, resolve them for us. And we're also talking about essentially like setting the bed in such a way that I'm reducing a lot of problems. Um, and we do it at the beginning of the process so that um, I'm not worried about adjusting text later on, by which I mean, if I were to typeset my book and look for all these errors and then run these tools and the tools do move text around, well, now I could be undoing work that I did early on. So I want to handle these automatic changes at the very beginning so that I know I'm, I have a good solid base to start my typesetting with. Okay, not hearing anything so far. So I think at this point, we're going to move on to the next thing that the typesetter would do, which is um, paging a document. 